Let's take a look at creating new objects in Windchill. And the method that we'll use here is by opening up local objects, saving them to the workspace, and checking them in. So I am in Creo Parametric. I am looking at Windchill in my embedded browser. First off, I'm going to create a new folder inside of Windchill. This is something that you're probably not going to do that much. Most likely, you're not going to have permissions to create folders. One of the problems with folders is that people go nuts with them. And so that's why most administrators limit the ability of people to create folders. But in my product, I need to have a folder for my engineering data. So I will create it. You can add a description if you want. At this point, you can click the apply button and then create more folders inside of here. If you hit the next button, it'll take you to access control where you can specify who has the ability to do what to it. I'm going to click finish out of here. And I've got a folder that I can check my new stuff into. Let me click on workspace from the common folders list. And here I can see that I have an empty workspace. I created this in my previous video. Now I'm going to retrieve some data from my local computer. I'm going to click on the open button. By default, it's going to go to your workspace. Let me go to my working directory and navigate to a folder on my computer where I have an assembly that I want to get inside of Windchill. So I will open up this one over here. All right, so that took a moment to retrieve. I've got it open on here. Let me just reduce my clutter by turning off my different datums. So you can see the model tree. Now I'm going to click the Save button. You can also use the keyboard shortcut of Control S. And because I'm connected to Windchill, in a moment I'll show you my workspace, and you'll see that all these different objects are now saved in the workspace. All right, the save operation has completed. Let me go to my folder browser. Now I will go to workspace and you can see before I had zero objects in there. Now I have 176 objects inside of here. You can see that we've got the file name. There are a bunch of different status indicators in here. If you're unsure what the status indicator means, just hover your mouse over it for a moment and it'll open up a little tooltip. So this is telling me that this object is new in here. Also, it is modified locally. It needs to be uploaded. And this means that is when the featured objects, when the objects that is sort of like, you know, I don't know, priority in my workspace. So anyhow, here are all the different objects in here. Now to get these into Windchill, I'm going to check them in. So I will use the select all button just to grab everything. And then this icon over here is for checking in. I believe that if you go to the file drop down menu, you also have a check in command. If you want to check in individual objects, you can do that from the action buttons in the line of the object. But I'm going to use the check in icon from over here. Now we have a list of all the different objects. And I'm going to expand the column for location. You can see right now it's just going to the top level of the power transmission product. I'm going to select all once again. And this icon in the toolbar allows you to change the folder that is going to. And that's why I created that engineering folder. Now I'll click the OK button. And these are all updated. At this point, you can just click the finish button if you want to do it, but I want to point out a few other different options in here. You can write a comment in here, for example, maybe you want to make an indication of the changes that you made to the object so that someone can see that information later on when they look at the history. Let's click on the next button over here to take a look at a few other different options. You can create a baseline and a baseline is a snapshot at this point in time of all the iterations of the various different objects. Since this is the first check-in, I really don't need to do that. Where I like to do baselines is especially before design reviews. I like to create a baseline so that way I can go back and say, hey, before we did our critical design review, what did this look like? And uh, so that you can check that and you can specify the folder for the baseline and the name for it. Here we have the option to auto-associate 
parts to CAD documents. In other words, create those WT parts or wind chill parts, which I'll explain in another video. Here's the option to do a new promotion request after checking the objects in. Here's an option to undo the checkout of unmodified objects. So let's say that I had grabbed some stuff from the windshield common space and put it into my workspace and then checked out certain objects, but didn't actually modify them. Well, you can specify that you want those objects to have that checkout status undone when you are doing this particular check-in. Here's the option to remove the objects from the workspace. Let's say I'm not doing anything more with these. I could then just take them out of here. Here's an option for auto resolve incomplete objects. Occasionally you're going to see things called ghost objects in your workspace. That's when you have a model that has an external reference to another model and that other model is missing. You don't know where it is, or maybe it got renamed on your local computer. For whatever reason, Creo Parametric cannot find the object that is being referenced. You'll end up with this ghost in your workspace. Back in the day, you used to not be allowed to check in objects with ghost objects, which was really, really painful. Now you have the option to have it update with an object on the server if one exists. If not, then just ignore it, or you could specify always ignore and auto resolve incomplete objects over here. Ah, that's a good object. By the way, these different options over here, you can have these set by different preferences, and I'll show that in another video. And here's the option to attach a report of the differences between the objects in this iteration and the previous iteration. Hey, there was no previous iteration. It does not make sense to attach a differences report, but I almost never attach a differences report. But anyhow, I've got everything filled in here for the options that I want. This is good. Let's click the finish button and now it is attempting to upload and we will let this start going. All right, this is an interesting situation. Here I have a report that the check-in failed, and it tells us to go to the Event Management Console for details. To get to the Event Management Console, you can go to the File menu, and then go to Manage Session. Here's Event Management, and then from the flyout, you can choose the Windchill server that you want. The other way to get to this icon, if you take a look at this symbol over here, is right in the bottom of the message area. You can click on this and go to the event manager. Here we can see that it failed and I will click on the view conflicts button. This will open up a dialog box and here tells us, okay, auto associate cannot create and relate multiple documents to the same part. Oh, this is an interesting situation. Okay, so let's see. Tells me the object that has an issue over here, 0151257, and I can check the other one over here. So this is a situation that happens when people give the same number to the part and also the assembly, uh, sometimes when they do that to the drawing as well. Windchill has a uniqueness requirement. So this is interesting. Let me see, 51257. Let me cancel out of here and close out of there. And, and lo and behold, here is the issue. Again, we have the assembly and the part with the same number. So I'm going to change one of these objects. Let me go to my workspace and let's find again from here, 51257. And let's select this part over here and I'm going to find the rename command. And let's give it some unique identifier information over here. So I'm going to change this. Let's call this 01-51257-001. Do a little control A, control C to copy that. And for the new file name, let's control V and then dot PRT on the end. 
and for the new name of the object. This is where you would usually use real words to do this. Uh, when you are creating new objects, I can't stress this enough, when you hit the File New button, be sure to write in a common name. I hate when people don't write in a common name because then when I check all this stuff into Windchill, it is going to just have the same name and number and it's going to be harder to search for the object. So anyhow, it's saying that, hey, replace in session. So right now I've got the assembly top level assembly open over here and it's saying that I'm going to have to replace what you have in session with the renamed object I will click yes from over here and so now let me get rid of the filter on the objects in here so we can see all the objects in the list same thing in the model tree just so I can see everything so now we've got everything over here let me select all and then let's re attempt the check-in And again, we've got all the different objects here going to the correct folder. And again, let me auto associate the parts and let's see what else did I want to do. Oh yeah, auto resolve in case there are any ghost objects. Now I will hit the finish button and we have the status going on again. Oh yeah, by the way, as this is going, you can see the little pros progress indicator down here at the bottom. People call those the swimming sharks. But anyhow, the check-in succeeded. Now when you take a look in my workspace, before I had 100 some objects, now I have 336 objects because by turning on the auto associate option, we also got something called WT parts or wind chill parts created for each one of the CAD documents. And WT parts are extremely powerful inside of wind chill. And I'm going to do a whole separate video just on that. Let's take a look inside of the folder in the common space. I'm going to use the little breadcrumb trail over here to go to the product. And here we have the engineering folder. Uh-oh, looks like I had a little bit of an issue. There is a thing where you uh, can end up having the WT parts go to a different folder than the objects that you're checking in. That's another option that I have to have turned on. But here we have the engineering folder. 176 objects inside of here and you can see the list of the various different objects that have been created. Let me go back to the top level folder using the breadcrumb trail and I am going to select this object, scroll down to the bottom, use the shift key to select all those different parts. I could have also done select all and just turned off the two different folders and let me go to let's see the actions button over here has a move command and i've got all the different objects let me select all rows this button allows me to select the new place for where these should be moved i want them to be in the engineering folder as well let's click the ok button and now everything is a lot cleaner and neater inside of here uh, by the way, you also have a drop down list over here. So maybe you just want to see CAD documents listed inside of here and we can see them. Or you could filter to just, let's see, what other things do I want in here? It's a long list. There we go. Parts, if you just want to see the WT parts. But let's go back over here to all. Right now, everything is sorted by last modified. Let me choose to sort them by the number. And that way we can see the CAD documents with their WT parts. In another video, we will take a look at the object information page for both CAD documents and WT parts. But that's how you can take objects from your local disk and then save them so that they're in your workspace and then check them in so that they are now in the Windchill common space. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.